Now, the media is talking about the polls, and all of the polls, they'll tell you, show that Obama is significantly, in some polls, ahead. Really? Okay, I've seen all the polls. This network will tell you the truth. I don't personally believe that they have the polls right because I think things have changed, and we'll get into that here in a second. But the truth is, just taking them at face value and believing them, it's a statistical tie. So why is it everybody in the news is telling you that Obama's got it? Why is it you feel that Obama is going to win? Really? The left is already managing expectations for the election and for the debate. They have to. They have to manage expectations for the election. They have to do it. You see, I thought about this this weekend. Spooky dude comes into play again. At the end of this, let's go past the election. It's the adventures of Spooky Dude. George Soros doesn't steal elections um, before the election. He steals it after the election. Every time he's ever collapsed something, it always happens around an election, and there's always civil unrest about they stole it. Remember 2000? Let me tell you about the Secretary of State project, the SOS project. It was funded by George Soros. He got its start in 2006 as a way to help Democrats secure the position of Secretary in State in several swing states, specifically states where John Kerry had lost to George W. Bush in 2004 by 120,000 votes or less. Well, that sounds nefarious just on the surface. Why would you do that? Well, because secretaries of state, they are relatively cheap to fund as far as state-level campaigns go because nobody really cares. And so if you remember the guy's name, you win. Yet they have quite a bit of influence over election regulations and results. Do you remember Catherine Harris, Florida, 2000? How about um, Kenneth Blackwell from Ohio in 2004? Since the secretary is required to certify election results, they have tremendous influence in close races. So the left wanted to make sure that they controlled all that influence after 04. Five of the seven candidates that George Soros backed in 2006 won. Most significantly, Mark Ritchie in Minnesota. And Mark Ritchie played a really big role in the 2008 Minnesota race. Two years later, he was able to use his influence as Secretary of State to decide an election in favor of the left. After the votes were in for the Senate race, it appeared that Norm Coleman had been beaten, uh, or I mean had won and beaten Al Franken. And it was 725 votes for uh, Coleman. Well, that was close enough for an automatic recount. But somehow or another, during that recount, Franken went from 725 votes behind to 312 votes ahead and was declared the winner. Isn't that amazing? All from Mark Ritchie, Secretary of State, George Soros. Now, I'm happy to say that enough people had done their homework by the 2010 midterm elections that America had caught on or was simply fed up with the forced passage of Obamacare. They defeated five of the seven candidates backed by the Secretary of State project. As of now, the... Um, the organization is inactive, but according to the founder, the project still exists on paper. So what does this all mean to you? Well, first, you've got to cloud the election results preemptively. This race is the closest one I think I've seen in my lifetime. Maybe not. Maybe it doesn't turn out that way. But so far, I mean, it has been within two or three points the whole time. If Romney wins close... And the media has been saying, look how far ahead he is. There's no way Romney can win. What do the stupid people do? The stupid people will be easily convinced there was some foul play. He stole the election. And social unrest that they will foster and have been fostering will continue. Something's wrong here. Look how far ahead Obama was. No, no, no. It's a dead heat. The polling firms, are they wrong? Or are they in on it? I don't think they're in on it, but I do know the media is spinning it. I mean, there's one poll out that says 11 points. Give me a break. Some of them have to be either just recklessly wrong or they are in the bag. But most of them show a dead heat. And in the week that Obama has been tracking backwards, they're saying he's, he's even in more trouble 
Romney is, not Obama. That doesn't make sense. Right now, there's a couple of other reasons why you would exaggerate this poll lead. One, it would discourage the marginal voters who are leaning towards Romney because you're like, I'm not going to put my pants on and go outside and vote if my guy can't win. Two, it encourages bandwagon voters to vote for Obama. Whatever the reason, I'm telling you right now, if you see a turnaround and Romney wins, if it's not by a large number, you're headed for trouble. But here's the thing about Romney. He's a turnaround guy. He's a turnaround king. He's made his money turning things around, whether it's the Salt Lake City Olympics or the companies that he streamlined at Bain, Staples, Home Depot, or Bain Capital itself. Romney knows how to make the hard decisions and put in the hard work and the long hours. However, when you're watching the debate tomorrow, know that that's who he is. He's not the guy you want to see coming to your company because he's not funny and he's not fun, exactly. I don't know if you really ever like this guy in his job because he is a guy who makes you work harder and smarter. He sits with the companies that he engages. He doesn't give them advice and then leave. He makes sure the measures get implemented. And he asks everybody, I know people who have worked with him, he asks people, wait a minute, wait a minute, you think that'll work? Why does that work? He pushes people to think differently. He's the paid skeptic in the room. He isn't the guy who says, let's keep Home Depot at half the cost. It's a dream come true. It's a sale, sale, sale. It's his job to say, you have too many hammers. Or, were you hammered when you ordered all these hammers? That's why he doesn't feel like Ronald Reagan. He's a mechanic, not a salesman. When your economic is in, uh, engine is in trouble, I'd rather have the mechanic than the salesman. But does the rest of America? Um, everybody, everybody um, has to do their part. But I think the media is doing more than their part in shaping this race. The press and everybody else, it seems, wants Romney to fail, except for maybe you, me, and Romney himself.